What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to the joiners, shout out to the Point of View crew, and I gotta get rid of these. Wired Wolf, two big bags, organic, Badago coffee. I gotta get rid of it, man. I've been sitting around here, it's supposed to go to you guys. I need to get, how do I do it though? Here's what I'm thinking. Everyone seemed to love the $5 deal with the magnets and the stickers, and I write a letter. I'll do a $10 deal. I'll throw in a couple more magnets and a couple more stickers. A longer letter. Because I'm going to give someone one of these bags of coffee. i got to cover the, the postage. So, between now and Friday, whoever sends cash at me some money for the stickers and the magnets, I'm going to pick someone to send one of these bags of coffee to by Friday morning. Probably only one person. Maybe two. You're not going to have a lot of competition. I'm talking to you. The one person thinking about doing the deal. It's going to be you. You might end up with all three bags of coffee. There's going to be a coffee drinker full. Maybe four or five people will go ahead and take me up on the offer for the magnets, stickers, and litter. I got three bags of coffee. If there's five people, your chances are great. And if there's five and three people get coffee, I'll kind of feel bad for them too. I'll make sure I throw something special in there. So yeah, $10, magnets, and stickers by Friday morning. Kind of throwing those names in a pot. You guys are going to get something bonus special too. I need to get these coffees to you. Because I, I got a ton of these. I drink these all day long, bro. And plus, you know, I'm stuck on rock stars. That's where we're at. Shout out to Green Eye Gemini for the hat. And shout out to my cousin's ignorance that I still have the matching shirt. I literally will give someone the shirt off my back. When I went by his pad after Hoodstocks, kind of long story, stay the night, even though I, I knew he's not doing too well. That's why I want to give him the shirt. He's not doing well. And he doesn't have, I didn't have very many my clothes with me. And I want to bless him. I gave him some a little care package, a hat, some socks, a shirt. And I was like, here, bro. And he looked at this shirt. And he's like, what? Like he was disrespected. That's a Kmart. My brother's from That's a Kmart shirt. Which is funny because, yeah, when I was a youngster, back in the day, junior high, whatever, Champion was like a Kmart brand. I don't know how they went from shit to sugar. Good for them. They made the comeback because now this brand is popping. I tried to bless it with them. He's like, Kmart shirt. So I took it back then. You know what? I didn't give him nothing for that attitude. I'll take it all back then. Big as a man. I got the shirt. Shout out to Green Eye Gemini for the hat. Bro, I should give the coffee, the hat, and the shirt to Randy Torres. I'm talking to you, Randy Torres. Because he reached out to me on Instagram in direct message. He said in my last video I looked tense. Which I'm not tense. I mean, I'm... Mm -mm. Can't see, but I'm doing a lot of footwork. I'm loose, bro. All day long. No, stop, 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 stop. So I don't know what you're talking about, Randy Torres, but he said I look tense and he offered to give me a back rub and a neck rub. Randy Torres, he said he wanted to get the kinks out. He's, he's like, I'm a professional. I, I'm not, I just really want to hook you up with a good back rub. Hey, I appreciate the offer. I'm good though. I'm super straight. Whatever back rub and I need, any kind of like not get worked out, Green Eye Gemini has got me all day long. Thank you though, Randy Torres. No gift for you today though. Hey. This is the video I was talking about yesterday when I said there's going to be another video. I didn't know how to explain it in the title. This video is about how a cop came into our pod dressed as an inmate to do an investigation. But first I want to say this. You know what my desire is? My desire is that when you guys watch a prison POV video, like, watch the whole thing. Or most of it. I don't like the idea of people just watching half of it. And I thought about it. Is it my fault because I add too many stories? Like, I think this video ha it has like five stories in it. Should I come on and just make like a 13-minute video with just one story? Because you're not likely to cut out in the middle of a story. I like to think my storytelling abilities and they're a little bit more interesting than that. So, if I, should I come on and just tell one story? 10, 13-minute video? To, am I giving too much is the question. Should I be giving five stories in 22, 23 minutes? I don't know. Because people, like my last video had an average view duration of nine minutes. And it's 21 minutes long. Now, I doubt Bernie people will cut out after nine minutes. I think some people just log right, you know, pull the video up and then immediately pull out. It messes with the numbers. I do watch numbers. If you're a YouTuber, of course, you got to look at the analytics. And I just don't like it when the view duration is way low. And I feel like you guys are speaking to me. Uh, it's your channel too, so I'm hearing your thoughts on it. And to me, that's saying something loud and clear. We don't want to watch all of it. So, I don't know. I'm going to keep it up for now. Five videos, 21 minutes. I just, I hope, I mean, get at me in the comments. What's up? One, one story, 13 minutes, that's how we should do it. Anyway, be that as it may, bro, this is what's up. So, and the thumbnail, shout out to Dave. Do you guys see the thumbnail? What that is in the background, it's a Kern River oil lease. All those pumping units, oil dells like that, hence the name oil dell. We have them all over. Taft is full of oil leases, pumping units. Out there at Laredo, the Kern County jail. 
Way out in the middle of nowhere, they got like a dairy farm, of course they got some orchards, but they got tons of pumping units and oil leases, tons of them. That's why, back in the day, one of my good homeboys escaped. Escaped from the farm. Not very easy to do. Not very easy to do at all. But, guess what? He had superhuman strength because his old lady was cheating on him. And bro, that'll... Blah, 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 blah. Nothing is worse, dude. Bro, I caught a stabbing. Went into jail. The homicide detectives visited my mom, asking her questions. I called her, and I didn't know anything about what happened to the guy. And she told me that. And bro, I guess you can imagine, I was like, what? I was like tripping out, like, no way. But that didn't bother me as much as when I get on the horn and find out that the old lady's out messing around. That's way worse, dude. That'll really get under your skin. And this is like a slap in the face. Like, you're going to do what? With who? What? So he's in jail on the farm. Find out his old lady's being unfaithful. He develops a plan and he splits, bro. He makes it happen. And he takes off running and he said he kicked off his shoes by accident. Those old funky kind of gel shoes, bro. Like, one size fits all. Those came off. But all the oil that he ran in. He said the oil got on his socks and developed like a sole of a shoe. He said he was able to run all the way through the fields. Hey, I'm talking to the biggest show of Kern County homeboys. Check out what dude did. He ran from Laredo to Oildale. Facts. Got all the way there, tripping on his leg the whole time. Got to the spot. The dude was in the pad. Can you imagine how good that felt? First off, you hear the bad news. You want to try to leave. You don't know if you can pull it off or not. Next thing you know, dude, you're outside the fence and you're actually running. You don't know if you'll make it to Oildale. Boot. Then, you, then there you are. Your neighborhood. You don't know what's going to happen. Then you see dude's truck. He's there. The plant's coming together. He said it felt so good when he slung open that door. And they were like, oh, looking like couldn't believe it. They saw a ghost. And he just said, pow. Got him, broski. Knocked him down. Knocked him out. And dude, he said it was worth every bit of trouble he got into. He did get in a gang of trouble. But he said, dog, uh-uh, that trouble is Nathan. It felt so great. And I can imagine. So homeboy, yeah, he did that. And so let's get on with this. So, the story though, man. The story. I have two more little stories. I don't know if I should get in the main one about the cop coming in as an inmate or sitting afterwards. Okay, look. These females who are working laundry, they pass out the clothes to the fellas in Depot and pre-trial. They came through. They had a clavo. They're supposed to get to the south side or a homie. Top tier, right-hand corner. Girls brought the laundry in. They had the clavo. Dude didn't get it. Checked his laundry. Like, what happened? The girls realized their mistake. Oh, shoot. We accidentally didn't, we accidentally gave it to D5 instead of D4. It was just one pot over. But they did go top tier, right hand corner, just wrong little, uh, next door. So they messed that up. They realized their mistake. So they're like, oh dang it, get charged to the wrong cell. Figured out the dude who was in that cell that got it is a solid dude. Wood, just got a life sentence. Been around the world once, talked to everybody twice. Been around forever, had a gang of respect coming. If, he'll give it back. So God had him on paper. Hey, boy. Hey, homeboy. I think we made a mistake. You, you ended up with something bars. Can we have it back, please? He's like, no, no, no. I didn't get anything. And they're like, what? Well, we're certain that if we didn't, he didn't get it, it had to be you. So now they're like, dang. Okay. Now what's the next plan? Did we drop it? Like, what happened to this missing combo? Like, this guy didn't get it and this guy didn't get it? But they think the wood's lying with life sentence, kind of, because he had to have gotten. So everyone's watching him. And he's staying sober. They're asking a celly. Celly's like, he didn't put any paraphernalia. He ain't been fixed. And he's just the same old dude. So they're like, man, maybe we must have dropped it. This dude got sent a life sentence, like I said. Three strikes. You got three strikes, you're out. You got 25 to life. When you get sentenced, it takes like three weeks to catch a chain. And most of the time, you don't know. They crack a door at like midnight, 1 a.m. Eh, Wasco, Wasco, Wasco. And you'll know to step out. You're going to Wasco. Sometimes you get asked to cop after dinner around 5, 6 p.m. Hey, am I on that list tonight to catch a chain? Sometimes I'll be like, yep, you're leaving tonight. That's what happened to this lifer. He'd been sentenced for three weeks. He asked the cops, am I leaving tonight? I said, yeah. So at day room lockdown, when the government shut the day room down, which there was no cops in, in, the, in the pods, none at all. They watched the glass bubble, if they watch it all. There's doors at either end. They walk through, be like, eh, and then they'll come walking through this way. Get over here, eh, and they go to the top tier. Eh, eh. So they're in and out, but they're never posted up, never kicking back. I doubt they even watch from the bubble. Anyway, lock down, lock down, dare them over, dare them over. They don't watch. They just assume everyone's going to go in their cell and lock it down. The doors are automatic. There's no cop with the key. Lock it down, lock it down. That dude who got 25 to life, who's leaving the night at Wasco, didn't go in his cell. No, no, no. There's, the, there's these two woods down the tier. Been preparing a batch of wine. Now, when you make pruno, it's not, bro, it's a process. It could take two, three weeks. First, you got to hustle up all the oranges. Then you got to get the sugar and some juices. 
in the bag and you got to babysit it and bro it takes time to burn all that sugar you can't get the water real hot in county jail it takes time bro you got to blood sweat and tears over that thing that's your baby this thing was finally ready through you know two weeks ten days three days whatever three weeks the wine was ready they're gonna drink that night so the dude who got the life sentence was leaving the wasco locked down in their cell went in there and the door shut behind him and they're like what the fuck he didn't ask him he's like what's up fellas let's get drunk they're like dude whoa what are you doing dog and then they know these leaving to Wasco tonight, and they're like, bro, in like four or five hours, you're gonna crack your door and say, Wasco, Wasco, and you're not gonna step out. What are you gonna do? Like, hi, let me play trick, me down in this cell. What are you gonna do, dog? You're fronting the whole thing off. But they thought, got a life sentence, maybe when a little bit cuckoo, he wants to drink. Let's get drunk. Can't cry or spill milk, you're in here. Let's pass out the cups, they got hammered. This dude was being like a bully. He drank most of the wine. He was slamming cups down, give me another one. Slamming and getting drunk. Plus, he had a handful of pills. Sarah Cole's even. And he took him, and he was faded. When he was nice and faded, he pulled out that clavo that the girls mistakenly gave him several weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever the case may be. The girls accidentally gave it to him in laundry. He'd been holding on to it for tonight. He pulled it out. Those two woods and their cell with their wine were like, oh, couldn't believe it. They said later that they felt like maybe they should have beat his ass because he messed up, but they were shocked, and that's the homeboy. They got love for him, and he got a life sentence, and he lost his mind. They're like, dude, what? He's like, yeah, dog, I got it, you know. Fuck it. He drew up, didn't offer them none, drew it all up, went with it, and went out. Boom! He had a plan. He's going to do that life sentence on his terms, which is not at all. He wasn't going out like that, dog. I guess he thought long and hard about it. At least I hope he did, because he made a very serious, permanent decision. Murked himself, dog. He got drunk, took the pills, and went with it, and went out. Now, the dudes didn't want to say, man down, man down, get the cops there, because they didn't want dude to come to and see the cops there, and they didn't want to be like cop callers. They tried to do the CPR, pound on his chest, do whatever they can, water, water, get him going. He, and it's like, this dude is not all right. When he starts turning blue and purple, we got a problem. They did notify the cops. Cops came in, took him out. Now, they, out of respect for homeboy, did not say that he broke out that club. I'm going to smut him up like that. Just whatever. Only a few people know that. And now, YouTube world, hey, but this happened several years ago, and notice how I'm not handing out names. If you know, you know. They didn't throw it out there, dog, out of respect for homeboy. And so anyways, and those girls end up bringing dude another club later. He wasn't doing without. Just that one came up missing. By the time you get the next one, you don't care about the missing one. Now, do you? So, dude went out. DOA, whatever. Rest in peace. None but love, homeboy. A couple days later, here comes this dude walking in. At an odd time, too, 9 a.m., with a weird, real stroll. People come in at night, bro. From the farm or just from the, the buses. He came in at 9 a.m. Kind of just weird. And he just went and he went to an empty cell. Which is pretty odd. And what's more odd about that, the cell wasn't empty. But they moved this dude, they moved this dude. We have an empty cell, here comes this dude. Bam, empty cell. He's trying to avoid everybody. Immediately he starts working out, doing squats. Kind of chipping everybody, a towel over his head like this. And a towel over like this. Two t-shirts. He's just kind of being real sneaky and quiet in the corner. Just looking real odd. No one's going to let you be a recluse up in there and say, push up on him. Do what's your name? What are you doing? Where's your paperwork? Why are you here? Let's get to know each other. What's going on? He's like, I'm here for arm robbery on a pizza delivery guy. Guy brought me a pizza, delivered it to me. I robbed him. Like, oh, okay. Had the paperwork and everything. But a case like that, especially back in the day in Bakersfield when it happened, would have caught the media attention. And just would have. And it wasn't on the news. They didn't hear nothing about it. That's what he said he was there for. So... That was the first day. He was just kind to of himself, and everyone's like murmuring and talking about him. What's up with this dude? Then the next day, his two colors came out, and everyone knew it was up this dude. He started asking big questions about the guy in the cell. That was that's R R I P. The homie that went out. He said, "What's up with that dude?" He goes, "When I came here, when the cops escorted me, they said a guy died in here. Is that true? What happened? How did a guy die in here?" They're like, "Look." No one's up and discuss it, but since your persistence was tell you real quick that he overdosed. He took some pills and he drank, had a life sentence, he was overdosed. Oh, really? That's what happened? And he was asking everybody. And that kind of stuff's not allowed. That's considered nosy, and that'll get you beat up early. But he was doing it in such a manner that really he was like scaring people. Because it just seemed like he was a straight-up cop. How he was acting. Everyone put two and two together. The racers were talking like, dude, we think this is a straight-up investigator. And it's not like paranoia, like, oh, it's a cop. Because remember, you guys, before, I had a guy who came to my cell. I thought it was a cop and stuff. So, eh, you know. But when everyone thinks it, bro, and it's, it's plain as Jane. And, dude, the 60 days in, like I'm talking about, it's coming on Thursday night. 60 days in, a show on a &E. What they used to do is take, like, Joe Blow, regular people, and put him in a jail to gain intel. But it never really worked out. A bloop in the face. Because when they put, put those Joe Blows in there, the convicts are like, something's wrong with them. They're not convicts. This is a Joe Blow. They don't know anything about jail. It's like, we know something's up. That's how we felt when that dude came in. We know something's up. 
This is not just like a regular, this is not the type of dude that would do an arm robbery on a pizza delivery guy. He's just, no, dog. This is, and the way he kept saying, what happened to that guy? What happened to that guy? What happened? What happened? He's always using the phone. He would talk to this dude, get on the phone. So one day, homeboy pushed up on him. Because every time he's on the phone, you get close to him, he gets quiet. So homeboy pushed up on him real close. He's like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? He you talking to? He's like, my friends. He's like, tell him to give me some money. He goes, all right, let me see your... So homeboy showed his name and number. He's like, no, er, er, get in the number. He was there for three or four days. He never did get a selling. All he did was walk around, be on the phone, and ask about what happened to that guy. He wanted to know what happened to that guy. He asked everybody twice. What happened? What happened? And then one day he was just gone. Left right at two in the morning. And then like a couple of days later, homeboy got a money slip. They shot him 20 bucks and it said from friends. So trip on that. That's my experience with some 60 days in type stuff. But let me tell you the weirdest slicing, bro. Because that's, that's kind of like my, bro, that's my character. That's kind of what I'm known for is like multiple stories. And I hope I continue that way because I already want to go into another story. Why not? Because we're past that one. And I want to tell you about the strangest, homeboy. Strangest slicing ever. It has to do with laundry. I'm working a laundry in Max Mead. Every once in a while, laundry, you'll see a slingshot will come through. Dude, it's just all regular clothes. Uniforms, the socks, the old beat up boxers they give you. One size fits all, the weird shit. And once in a while, you'll see a tank top, a slingshot, or a white t shirt, or cool socks, hang socks, and regularly even boxers. Plaid like nice boxers for the loom, bro. Now that shit don't sound like much, but it's everything when you're in jail and you've been wearing one size fits all, just nasty gel clothes. So homeboy had these boxers. And it's already like, hey, can I have when you leave? Can I have when you leave? So can I have when you leave? Then when he leaves, he gets them, he gets them like a long line of people who want to inherit these blue plaid boxers. Then this one day this dude's gonna go to court. He said, I'm going to court tomorrow. He says, dude, can I borrow your boxers for court? We thought he was joking. We all start laughing. Ha ha ha. Kinda like you ever seen dude like a partial of one tooth? He used to offer, my homeboy Tom had one, he used to offer to people, you going to visiting tomorrow? Someone with a missing tooth. You want to wear this? It's broke. Can I wear your boxers to visiting? What? He's like, yeah, I got Bonnaroo pants with a baby cup, brand new socks. I got a brand new shirt. It's all creased up. I want to wear some, the, the boxes, bro, so I get the full experience. I'm all G'd up. Dude's like, no, you can't wear my boxers. Well, they called that dude out for medical or something, and he sliced that full right in the freaking, I think try to get his face, because the gate opened and he walked out they called him and he put his arm back in because he didn't want the dude to chase him he wanted to get away and gave him a slice over some boxers it happened so bad i couldn't believe it and i can also believe how much blood came out it was everywhere dude ran out to get him slipped in it and he just grabbed the dude and the dude was like what are you doing, doing? get off me get off me why are you doing that and bro dude got sliced face was crying and doing the type where he's why did you do that to me why did you slice me leaking bloody worse snot and crying dog it's the weirdest thing ever Bro, just give him the boxers. Just give him the boxers. Bro, I never even think I didn't see someone get sliced up over some boxers. But I do can imagine, like, the thing, because I kind of pulled, like, a move like that, too. I told someone I could have something, and he got really pissed off over a shirt. Well, I guess it's not the same thing. It's like laundry. But trip. I'm at Set Free. I, at Ukaipa. It's like a drug program, a church-related. And I get there. And this dude had all these Set Free shirts. And I thought they were pretty cool, because we're in Set Free, the church. It'd be like Set Free Tribe. And, like, those are cool shirts. And I had some money when I came. I think my dad might have made me 20. I offered to buy them off him. I offered to buy these shirts off him. Or some of them. He's like, yeah, I'll sell you the shirts as long as you let me wear one of them um, next Sunday or whatever. I'm going to go to church. I was like, yeah, dude, for sure. So I gave the money. He gave me the shirts. And I wasn't thinking to myself, no, nah, he ain't wearing this shirt. But when he came and jammed me up like a week later for Sunday, he's like, oh, yeah, can I wear that shirt up? I had a problem with the dog. I don't know why. I was like, what do you I don't want you to wear my shirt. I'm going to stretch out the neck, get it dirty. It's my shirt. I forgot the fact that that was a stipulation. But, dude, I didn't want him to wear the shirt. And, I, and I'm and i not saying I wasn't bullying him because this dude wasn't no pussy or no punk. He, he had, like, crazy strength. He had a crazy-ass life, all kinds of foster homes. I tell you, he had a chip on his shoulder. And he was just like, bro, he'd been kicked around his whole life. He wasn't taking no shit. He was quick to fight. And he had them buggy whips and long, skinny-ass arms, a tall dude. And when I told him, no, he couldn't have, wear the shirt, he took off on me. And we were fighting, bro, and no one would break it up. And we're since we're at a Christian thing, you know what they start doing? Some people start actually praying. And then the dude came out who ran who ran the thing. He wouldn't even break it up. He just saw it and just like walked outside. Wait till we tired ourselves out. And you know what happened? I was wearing one of the shirts. It got destroyed. I didn't let him wear the shirt. I thought he'd wreck it. Yeah, I ended up getting a wrecked shirt anyway. And then we ended up becoming the best of friends. I love a dog. I love a dog. Haven't you thought someone become cool through after that? Oh, kind of like earn a respect or whatever. I don't know, man. But I do know that if you send me a couple bucks for the stickers and the magnets. You just might end up with some bomb coffee. So, let's do that, man. And what else? More videos. Friday Night Live coming up, of course, every Friday at 8 o'clock. 
Another video tomorrow is going to be bomb. Believe that. Shout out to the homeboy Dave for the thumbnails. We're going to be doing some editing. We're going to be doing some reactions. Got a lot of things planned. No level of some respect. Shout out to Dave. Shout out to the Vice President Derek. Shout out to Green Eye Gemini. Shout out to the Point of View crew. Cut the string and let it fly. Peace.